and a happy Friday. Welcome back to Miss Cassidy Creates. I am Miss Cassidy, super excited to be here with you today. Let me go ahead and get our computer going so I can see all of your wonderful comments and questions and all that good stuff. I hope you're having a good week. I hope you did something fun. I had a super fun week because I got to teach summer camp this week virtually online to some of my students that I have during the school year. So it was really nice to interact with some of my kids again and we made a lot of cool crafts. We did a whole thing about around the world art. And so I was me and an art teacher and we talked about theater and art from all sorts of different countries. So that was my super exciting week. I got to be back kind of in my classroom, in my virtual classroom. But I'm super excited to be back here with you today. Uh, as always, check out our page anytime for any of the videos you may have missed. Hi, Guiding Light friends. Hello, I miss you guys. I hope you're doing well. Uh, you can check out our videos anytime. We had a dance class earlier this week on Tuesday. Uh, we have a bunch of fun cooking adventures. We made pizza last week, which I still think was one of my favorite things. Um, I also have had a bunch of super awesome suggestions from some friends. So hopefully next week we're going to do something kind of cool and new. I'm still working on it, but I'm excited about it. Hi friends, thanks so much for joining me. I'm so glad you're all here. Uh, and as always, you can find all of our videos on Facebook. And also, if you're looking to take some more classes or maybe do some different things, I am a teacher on outschool.com where you can go and you can sign up for a bunch of different classes I teach. And we can actually interact back and forth because it is a Zoom classroom. So I have dance classes up there. I have uh, theater history classes. I have a bunch of cooking and baking classes. And it's a whole wide age range. I go all the way from three years old to 18 years old. So however old your learner is or your sibling, whoever you've got, if you want to check it out on OutSchool, it's a great way to spend a little extra time together. And it's nice because I do get to see some of you, which I don't always get to do. Uh, I have a couple of friends from Miss Cassidy Creates here on Facebook that have joined me in dance classes, and it's just so joyous to see everybody. I love it. All right, enough of that. For some reason, this has taken its good old time to load my video, so we'll just let that go. And we can go ahead and start talking. Hi, friends. Thanks for joining. Your staff burnt the pizza. Darn. Well, you know what? Did they burn it past the point where it was edible? Because sometimes that little char on the crust is pretty good. <laughs> I like my crust to be doughy on the inside, but maybe a little crispy on the outside. That's like if you like your toast extra toasty or if you like it uh, a little bit more underdone. It's all just what we like. So today, friends, we are celebrating the birthday of an aviation pioneer. Aviation's a really big word. Do you know what aviation means? Aviation means flying. It's all about airplanes and traveling through the air. So we are talking about Amelia Earhart, who was a legendary pioneer of aviation. She was a groundbreaking woman, or I guess maybe we should say air-breaking woman because she did so many cool things, uh, flying and being one of the first women, and in fact, the first woman to fly across the Atlantic Ocean. So, uh, Amelia Earhart was, he said we blackened, it was blackened pizza, yeah, exactly. Put that on a menu, you can charge an extra two bucks for it. <laughs> Amelia Earhart was born July 24th, 1897 in Atkinson, or Atchins, Atchison, Kansas. Maybe if I have any friends from Kansas that know how to say that, you can pop in the comments and let me know. Uh, she was, she lived with her mother and her father and her young sister, Muriel. Amelia and her sister loved to explore. Uh, they would have all sorts of adventures collecting insects and frogs. They liked to play sports, including baseball and football. And with the help of Muriel and her uncle, Amelia made her first roller coaster. They made their own roller coaster that unfortunately had a little bit of a crash incident when Amelia was riding it. However, she did say it was like flying. So that might have been the first time that Amelia realized that there's something kind of cool about this flying thing. Maybe you want to check out more of that. Uh, when Amelia was 11 years old, she got to see one of the Wright brothers' planes. And if you don't know who the Wright brothers are, they were the ones to build the first airplane here in the United States. And so she got to go see this amazing new machine, but she was kind of not into 
right. She was like, meh, okay, that's cool. But it didn't really spark anything big in her. That didn't happen until later. After graduating from high school, Amelia wasn't really sure what she wanted to do, which I'm sure a lot of our friends, if you ask any older siblings or grown-ups, that a lot of us don't know exactly what we want to do when we get out of high school. It's not as old as you might think it is. <laughs> uh, so she went to college for a little while, and then she eventually dropped out because she was going to college during World War I which was a big scary war and she wanted to train as a nurse's aide to be able to help the soldiers involved in World War I, which is pretty cool. Already we're seeing she's got all these interests, she's really driven, she's really passionate, and she wants to help people, which we talk about all the time, how rewarding and fun it is to help people. So I think Amelia would have liked what we do. Uh, she studied to become a mechanic at one point, uh, but soon she went back to school to study for a career in medicine, so she was all over the place. The idea of becoming a mechanic makes sense because if you're going to fly airplanes, you probably need to know a little bit about the machines inside. But those instincts to want to help people and be a nurse really held on strong in her. So she went back to school to work in the medical field for a little while. Uh, eventually, she or once she got to take her first plane ride though, that was it. She realized how amazing it really was up in the sky, and there was nothing else she wanted to do after that point. In 1920, she went with her father to an air show in California. If you've ever gone to an air show before, they're really cool. You get to watch a bunch of people fly up in their airplanes. Sometimes they do tricks. Sometimes they do formations. And especially, this is 1920. The idea of flying in an airplane is still pretty new. So it would have been really amazing to look up in the sky and see these big metal tubes flying around. Kind of break your brain maybe a little bit for some people, but Amelia was super inspired. Uh, she later said that she knew she had to fly as soon as she saw the first plane take off a couple hundred feet off the ground. So from that point onward, Amelia worked super hard and she worked with her mom and they saved up enough money that she could buy her first airplane. It was a bright yellow airplane, which makes me love it even more because as we know, Miss Cassidy loves her yellow. I feel like I have something in common with Miss Amelia Earhart, which uh, to have something in common with such an incredible person is exciting. Uh, it was a yellow airplane that she named Canary. And she worked super hard. She kept flying, she got her pilot's license. She even set a new altitude record for female pilots. She went 14,000 feet in the air. 14,000. Guys, that's super high up. That would be like 777 giraffes stacked right on top of each other. 777 giraffes. It would even be 46 Statues of Liberty stacked on top of each other to be able to reach how high those airplanes were going. And again, you got to imagine, we've grown up in the 2000s where airplanes, we know about airplanes, we've got airplanes, we've got helicopters, we've got small airplanes, we've got big airplanes. But back in the early 1920s and 30s, this was still huge. This was crazy that people could fly 14,000 feet in the air. Amazing. In 1928, Amelia, oh, I forgot to show you. I wanted to show you a picture of Miss Amelia Earhart. There she is, Miss Amelia Earhart, obviously a little bit older in this photo. This is a young, young Amelia Earhart, but here she is. Uh, when she got her pilot's license and then in 1928, she became the first woman to fly across the Atlantic Ocean. She was the navigator on that flight. The airplane was called Friendship, which I think is pretty cool. And there were some other pilots that were on that flight with her, but she was still the first woman to make it across the uh, Atlantic Ocean on an airplane. So we've got our handy map here, and you can see right there, that's the Atlantic Ocean. So flying from here in the United States all the way over to either Africa or Europe, one of the other big continents. That's a long trip. That's quite impressive. Yeah, her first plane was nicknamed the Canary. That's absolutely correct. That yellow, we gotta love it. Uh, the airplane that she flew across the Atlantic in with her friends was called the Friendship. And on June 18th, 1928, after 21 hours of flying, that's almost a whole day, 
they landed in Wales, which is over towards England and Ireland. Uh, she was the first woman to make that flight, which is pretty impressive. When she came back to the United States, she was a hero. People were losing their mind for Amelia. She had parades. She was given awards. She even got to go visit the president. And spoiler alert, that wouldn't be the last time she got invited to go visit a president. In fact, there's a really cool story we're going to talk about in a little bit. Uh, and in fact, when she came back, in addition to everybody loving her and throwing parades, in 1929, 99 female pilots from all across the country united to form a group of celebrating female flyers. They were, uh, they were called the 99s, and they elected Amelia Earhart as their leader. Because, can you blame them? She's pretty cool. I'd want her to be my leader. But Amelia wasn't ready to give up. She wasn't ready to rest on her, her laurels and just be the first woman to make it across the Atlantic Ocean. She wanted to do more. She decided she wanted to be the first woman to fly solo across the Atlantic Ocean. That means to fly all by herself, which is a lot for anybody, regardless of whether you're a man or a woman or anywhere in between. That's an impressive feat to do that alone. So on May 20th, 1932, she took off from Harbor Grace, Newfoundland and plans to fly to France. And that's where you see on our map. I marked it there for you. Newfoundland is up in Northern Canada over here. And she wanted to fly to France, which is a little more inward into Europe. But she had a ton of crazy weather. There were bad storms. Her windshield got totally iced over and she's all alone. Think about how scary that has to be. Luckily, she was very smart and very brave, and she kept her head about her. Uh, and when she, after 14 hours of flying through all of those storms, she ended up landing in a foot in a field of a farm in London, Derry, Ireland, it's Northern Ireland. In fact, when she landed, there was a farmer that asked her where she had come from. She told him the United States, because that's where she had flown. Well, she had flown from Newfoundland, but she's from the United States. And he didn't believe her because he didn't think it was possible that somebody could make that whole trip, especially a woman, all by herself. But she did. Even if she didn't make it to Paris, she crossed the Atlantic Ocean and with some seriously scary conditions as well. She became the second person ever to fly solo across the Atlantic. So she was the first woman and the second person ever. She received tons of awards, again, parades, celebrations, all sorts of things. And she was invited to visit Franklin Delano Roosevelt at the White House, who was the president at the time. She got to also meet the first lady, Eleanor Roosevelt, his wife, and she took Eleanor up in a plane with her and took her for a flight, which we'll talk about Eleanor Roosevelt maybe at another time because Eleanor Roosevelt is another super cool lady in history. So the idea of those two girls up in the air together Sounds pretty cool. I would have liked to have been on that plane with them. Amelia continued to fly for the next several years and she broke a ton of records. Uh, she was the first person to fly solo from Hawaii to California. So again, coming across a big swath of ocean, Hawaii is gonna be an island over here and to get to California, she has to cross part of the Pacific Ocean. Uh, she also did a ton, she wrote books she worked for women's rights because obviously she was a pioneer. She was one of the first ladies in an entirely male-dominated field. So she fought, fought for the rights of women all over the country, not just pilots. Uh, and she knew that she wanted to do even more. She wanted to be the first woman to fly around the world, around the whole world which is a massive trip. That's a big undertaking. And she wasn't gonna do it solo because you need help if you're gonna do something that big. So she got a friend uh, named Fred Noonan. And on June 1st, 1937, they took off from Miami, Florida. So right here in the United States. And they were gonna go all across the world. They made it to Africa and Asia, to New Guinea, and then eventually wanted to get to New Guinea in the South Pacific. Or they made it to New Guinea, but they were gonna make their way all the way across the world. However, about a month later, on July 2nd, they took off from New Guinea to fly to Howland Island in the Pacific Ocean, and then they disappeared. Something happens, and we still don't really know what happened. That's the thing. you got to think about how early this technology was 
They probably encountered some kind of mechanical issue and they might have crashed their plane onto an island. They may have crashed into the ocean. They very well could have survived the crash, but we were never able to find them. So Amelia Earhart was trying to break down barriers till her very last day. And she went down trying to fly around the entire world. And there are some people who might think that that's a sad story. And it is a little sad because there was so much that she could do for us and continue to have done. But Amelia Earhart had an awesome life. She did a lot of amazing things. We clearly still remember her today. She is still regarded as one of the foremost females in the U.S. to be able to really break down some early barriers, you know, in the 1920s and 30s and before that, and even up until the 60s and 70s, women didn't have the same rights. And she did a lot of work to show that women could fly airplanes just like any guy, that they could have the same rights as any guy, and they were certainly just as smart. So I'm a big fan of Amelia Earhart. Uh, my grandparents had a picture of Amelia Earhart in one of the bedrooms in their house, and that was always the bedroom I wanted to sleep in because I thought Amelia Earhart was so cool, I wanted to sleep in the Amelia Earhart room. So that's a little bit about Amelia Earhart. And like we said, she was a flyer. She loved airplanes. So we're gonna do a couple different airplane crafts today. For our airplane craft, you're gonna need 10-ish popsicle sticks, if you don't have that many, that's okay. If you have two and a clothespin, we can make that work as well. But if you've got more, you can use more. You're gonna want some paints so you can decorate your airplane. We're gonna make one out of a toilet paper tube. So go ahead and get yourself a cardboard toilet paper tube. If you don't have this and you only have the popsicle sticks, that's okay. Cause we're gonna make two separate airplanes. One with our toilet paper stick and some popsicle sticks and some that's entirely made of popsicle sticks. Paint, markers, stickers, whatever you want to use to decorate. Glue, some paint brushes if you're painting. Some tape. And I didn't mention this in my list before, but I'm hoping since it's a pretty easy craft supply, you'll be able to get it. We need a pair of scissors. I'm sorry, friends. I don't know why I forgot about the scissors, but we need some scissors. So that's going to be for our two main crafts. We're going to make two airplanes. We're gonna have a special bonus craft that you can do if you would like to, but if you don't have it, it's okay. For that, you're gonna need some paper, preferably card stock, heavier paper, and a plastic or paper straw. Now, Miss Cassidy made a mistake. I set up all of my stuff here, getting ready to do our show, so excited to make our craft, and I forgot who Baby Boy is. I forgot what a destructive little demon cat he is, in spite of being adorable. And he chewed up my whole plastic straw. <laughs> So, and that was of course the only plastic straw I have because of course it would be, that's how that works. So I'm gonna use a metal straw to demo our bonus craft, but it's not gonna fly with a metal straw. So mine is gonna be just to look at. If you want to make one that flies, you're gonna need a paper or plastic straw. I wanted to still be able to show you how to do it in spite of baby boys, crazy ability to eat anything and everything regardless of whether or not it's food. So I've got my metal straw, but you should have a paper or plastic one, along with cardstock and tape. That's for the bonus round. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna start with our popsicle sticks. So, hi Jacob, hello buddy, good to see you. Jacob's one of my friends who's joined me on Out School. Jacob's awesome. We had a good time singing Into the Unknown the other day. So for our popsicle sticks, if you are using, let's go ahead and just start, if you don't have a handful of them, if you only have two or three, and you're gonna use your clothespin, that's totally fine. What you're gonna do is you're gonna take your uh, popsicle sticks, and you're gonna put one on top of the other at the edge of your uh, clothespin. And we're gonna go ahead and glue those on. Remember, a dot is a lot when it comes to glue. We don't gotta get crazy. There we go. Hi, Kate from California. Thanks for joining us, friends. I'm glad I'm getting more of my West Coast friends. This seems to be seems to be better if I do these a little later in the day so we can get more friends. So I'm gonna take a little dot of glue and I'm gonna put it right on the end on both sides, top and bottom, of my clothespin. I'm gonna set that down on one of my popsicle sticks and I'm gonna put the other one right on top. try to get them on straight. Now it's gonna take a minute to dry because we know that's how glue works, but right there, you already got a nice little plane, but we need the back wings. We need the rudder. So we're gonna go ahead and you can put one more on the back and you can either do this on the top or bottom, whichever one you prefer. 
another nice little dot. Get that popsicle stick on there. And we've got ourselves a tiny little airplane. We're gonna put that aside for one second to dry. So if you were doing the clothespin one, no sweat, put it aside, let it dry that glue a little bit. If you are using more popsicle sticks, we're gonna go ahead and do that version now. We're gonna kind of do this in phases, friends, because the glue does need to dry just a little bit to make life easier for us. So we'll put that one aside for a second. Now, if you've got more popsicle sticks, you wanna make sure if you're planning on making the paper or the uh, toilet paper tube one, save at least two for that put the other ones aside. And now I've got a nice group here of my popsicle sticks. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna line up a handful of mine. So I'm gonna save three to be my wings. And that means that I have four all together here. And we're gonna basically do the same thing we did with the, uh, with the clothespin. We're gonna put, I'm gonna do a nice line of glue, a really light line, because remember, we don't need a ton along the side and I'm just gonna stack these on top of each other. Nice light line of blue. And like I said, there's a lot of different kinds of airplanes. So if you've got a ton of popsicle sticks and you wanna make a whole fleet of different airplanes, go for it, you can mess with it a lot. So I'm pushing down on this a little bit just to help that glue set, make sure that they get stuck together. Now again, be careful because that glue's not dry, so it's gonna shift around a little bit if you play with it too much. And now we're gonna do the same thing we did on our clothespin by adding the wings. So not all the way at the tip top here, a little further back, we're gonna put a little dot, put down our wing, another one at the end for our back propeller, tiny little dot, put that down, and there we go. We've got the first part of our airplane. I'm gonna flip it over, ooh. See what I said about that glue being a little wet still? That's okay. That's all right. And we're gonna go ahead and add our bottom to the front there. Now, don't be discouraged if it's coming apart a little bit. That's okay. That's what happens when we're fresh and glue and stuff, right? It can move around a little bit. We just have to be gentle with our hands while it sets. So there you go. Now we have our totally popsicle stick. Oh, totally popsicle stick plane. This plane would not hold up flying across the Atlantic Ocean. So now you've got those two planes that we're just gonna let set for a second to get their glue to dry just a little bit. And you can decorate those any way you want. You can use paint, markers, uh, you can, if you're gonna make more of these, you can play around with do you wanna paint it before you put it together? Or do you wanna put it together and then design it? I think I'm gonna paint mine yellow to be like Miss Amelia Earhart and have my very own personal canary plane. But while we let those dry, let's go ahead and move on to our toilet paper tube. Keeping up with me, I know we're doing a lot today because we're doing it in phases. Don't sweat, we're having a good time. Just slowly putting our planes together. So with our toilet paper tube, you're gonna wanna take those scissors and you're gonna wanna put a hole in one side of it and then on the other side so that we can thread our popsicle stick through to be our wings on the side. And then you're gonna put one in the very tip top and the very bottom. So you've got two on the side two on the top and bottom, because we're gonna make that our back of our plane. So get a grown up or an older sibling, somebody who's good with scissors, or if you are already a pro with scissors, that's great, just make sure you're being careful. No matter how much of a pro you are, we always gotta be careful. So I've got my two on the top and bottom, my two on the outside. I'm gonna take my two remaining popsicle sticks and I'm gonna thread one through those side holes, just like that. And then we're gonna do one through the top and the bottom. Hop. So there, we kind of have an airplane looking thing, but not quite. So what we're gonna do to make it a little more airplane-like, we're gonna pinch the front 
We're gonna go ahead and pinch that down and you're gonna glue it or you can tape it. I am gonna tape mine just so that we don't have to wait for it to dry. You can also use a stapler here. If you have a stapler handy, just be careful because staplers can get sharp. And I'm gonna go ahead and tape the front part of my tube together just a bit. Shift my wings around a little bit. And then once we decorate it, it's gonna look even more like an airplane. Mine's a little crooked. I got a little off with my holes there, but that's okay. Luckily, we're not trying to fly in these planes. So if they're not totally put together well, that's okay. <laughs> so we've got three different kinds of planes set up here for us to decorate. We've got our toilet paper tube planes. We've got entirely popsicle stick where we made the middle part out of our popsicle sticks, which is already holding together a little better. And then we made our clothespin, where we took a clothespin in the middle, we put two popsicle sticks in the front, and one on the back. We've got three different airplanes, and you can paint these however you want to decorate them. Like I said, I think I'm gonna use yellow. You can use markers, you can use stickers, all sorts of cool stuff to help make those fly. Or not help make those fly, but help make them look at least fancy in the air. And now for a project where we are actually gonna end up with something that should fly. This is the one, like I said, this is the bonus project. So if you don't have these things, that's okay. Tuck it away in your brain and you can do it later because all you need is a paper or plastic straw, not a metal one like Miss Cassidy, we're blaming Baby Boy for that, and some card stock, heavier paper ideally. You can do it with regular paper too though. So we're gonna cut right in half. We're gonna cut our paper right in half For this first one and this is another one where you can play with variations because this is actually going to fly when we're done so you can try a bunch of different sizes and widths of your pieces of paper you can add wings to see what happens and you're going to go ahead and roll it into a circle take your tape which if you're smart which miss Cassidy wasn't just now rip off some tape ahead of time so you don't have to deal with holding that circle while also reaching for your tape so wrap it on up in a circle. Go ahead and tape it together so it holds its shape. Just like that. And again, we can decorate this however we want. If you want, if you're all about the decoration part of it, go nuts. Decorate it like crazy. Uh, it will maybe affect the way it flies though. So that's a fun thing to play with. So we've got a slightly bigger one here and then we're gonna make this one, our second one, a smaller circle. So I'm gonna wrap it a little tighter so you can see this one is smaller. And then we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna tape it so that it stays together. If you add things like stickers or uh, if you add paint that's a little heavy, it might affect the way it flies, which isn't a bad thing. That just means you get to do an experiment and see how it changes. This is so simple that if you have a bunch of straws, you can make a ton of these and you can change them up and see which ones work better. And what you're gonna do is you are gonna take those two circles and mine might've ended up being a little big, but that's okay. Cause again, we'll play with the size. And what I'm actually gonna do is we're just gonna trim this real quick. So they're a little thinner. Easy peasy. Reform it a little bit. So it's still a nice happy circle. And you don't have to trim yours. I'm just doing that so that it's easier to see as I'm making this. And then you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna tape it to that straw. So I'm using my pretty masking tape because I love my pretty masking tape. You can use whatever tape you got laying around, scotch tape, uh, packing tape, duct tape I'm sure would work. And you might need a hand to help you do this part because the straw likes to roll around a bit might need somebody to give you a hand but there we go attach it so it's like that attached nice and good on the end there and then on the other end we're going to do the same thing with our slightly bigger circle and you want to tape it to the same side so that if uh, you're holding it they're both on top or they're both on the bottom you want them to both be on the same side get that part attached I'm 
I'm using two pieces because that's how my masking tape seems to work best. You might only need one if you're using packing or duct tape. There we go. And here you go. You've got a little hole and then a big one. And when you throw this, like I said, the metal one probably, we can try it. Let's see. I'm not going to throw it right at the camera because I don't want to break my phone. But yeah, it came down pretty fast because it's made out of metal. But if you do this with plastic or paper, that should actually fly and continue to go because it's catching the wind in those circles. We're making our very own airplanes actually ready to fly. Like I said, you can add other things. You can change the shapes of, or the sizes of the circles. You can add wings on the side. Play around. See which ones fly better. You can play catch in the backyard with somebody. So there you go. We made four different kinds of planes, I guess, which is crazy. If you've just been making these and you've been decorating them, that's awesome. I hope they are turning out great. If you made any of these and you want to send me pictures, I love seeing the work that you guys do. So please feel free. You can message those to me uh, or you can tag us at Miss Cassidy Creates. If you don't want it out on the public internet, I totally get that. But you can still message it to me if you would like to. And I promise it'll stay in my inbox. No problem. Uh, I would love to see what you created. And if you have a video of you flying it, that would be super cool too. I tagged some other videos that are about Amelia Earhart, so if you want to learn more about her, go ahead and check those out. Uh, we are going to be taking a break for the weekend, as we normally do on Sunday. I'll go ahead and post our schedule for next week. As always, check it out on outschool.com to take some extra classes with Miss Cassidy if you're feeling like it. We got dance, baking, cooking, music. Uh, I'm keeping a lot of my arts and crafts here, so if you're looking for arts and crafts, but you want to take them on out school, let me know. I've had a lot of friends sharing wonderful ideas for what they would like to see more of, and I love that. So if you have any specific requests that you think we should learn about or a craft you think we should do, please send them my way. I love hearing from you folks, and I love hearing what you would like to do because it's super interesting, and it just helps guide me to pick fun stuff for all of us. So I hope you have a wonderful weekend. I hope I see you next week. We'll go ahead and post that schedule on Sunday. And uh, you keep on being yourself. You keep on smiling. And I'll see you soon, okay? And be like Amelia Earhart. Don't be afraid to take an adventure or two. And don't, do so and don't not do something because someone says you shouldn't. Because she just showed us. No matter what anybody says, you can do what you want. All right, friends. Have a great weekend. Thanks so much for joining me. Bye. Goodbye, goodbye.